Um, I had just finished up the final day of a two-day regional conference and was getting ready to drive back home. I called home to check in with my husband who was caring for our two small children, but there was no answer. So I finished loading up and began the three-hour trip home. Not long after I pulled onto the interstate, he called me back. I could tell he had been drinking. Again, the anxiety began swelling inside of me and I felt my heart rate go up. My skin felt flushed and I felt physically sick. I was frantic and helpless that my three-year-old and six-month-old were under his care. I quickly hung up the phone and called in reinforcements to take the children. In that moment, I felt so betrayed and so angry. He had been struggling with issues around alcoholism for years, but this was the first time he ever endangered our children. Our relationship dissolved quickly after that, but we still saw each other frequently so that he could visit the kids. Addiction had invaded my home and it began to take its wrath on my family. Coincidentally, around the same time this happened, I began working for a clinic that specialized in behavioral health and addiction. As a physician assistant, the only training I received on mental health included a two week module in psychiatry and four weeks of clinical tra training. As a soldier, I had seen many of my comrades suffer with post-traumatic stress, depression, and even some with alcoholism, but I never truly knew how to help them. One of the first clients I saw at the clinic was a young man around the same age as my spouse who was addicted to methamphetamines. He and his spouse would come into counseling together as he was working hard to achieve recovery. Although I knew his battle was difficult, I also admired the woman with him. The clinical staff offered her personal counseling as well, and it was my first reminder that the treatment of addiction extends beyond the addict. This concept provided me refuge, and I knew it would be a cornerstone in my own healing. But I was still hesitant to take the first step at the foothill of that mountain. I began to learn more about addiction and even began to process how it affected me emotionally. I took advantage of learning more about trauma and adverse childhood events to understand the role that trauma played on neurobiology and how it altered the function of the body. I further began to understand the neurobiology of addiction and met many more clients and their families struggling with this terrible disease. The thing that was consistent for me was the recognition that the treatment of addiction was not limited to the addict. As the spouse of someone with addiction, I finally understood why I felt the way that I felt and I thought the way that I thought. You see, as a loved one of an addict, there's a lot of shame and misunderstanding. We love deeply and sometimes to a fault. The months passed by and I continued my journey up that mountain with each piece of information I learned about trauma and addiction and about myself, I climbed a little higher towards the summit. It was about seven months later when my spouse was sober, I was willing to give him another chance and allowed him back into my life. But it was not long after that that his old behaviors crept back in. I walked cautiously around my house, not knowing exactly what would stir an upset and lead to an episode of binging. I kept my children close, but began to shut out my family and my friends. I didn't want anyone to know. The sense of shame haunted me daily. And I live with the anxiety that many other family members of addicts face. Thinking to myself, will he be drinking today? Will he get loud? Will I have to leave with my children? What if someone finds out that he's drinking again? A few months passed by and the holidays were approaching. I got a call that made my heart sink. He had been arrested. I was weary and had been praying for an awakening for so long that I began to actually feel relieved. If he was in jail, then he was safe. It was during this period of time that I had come to the realization that I could love my, love my addict, but I couldn't love him out of his addiction. After this incident, it was less than a week before he checked himself into a rehab facility. The time he was there, I continued my journey up that mountain, learning more about addiction, participating in family sessions offered through that facility. I watched as my husband was humbled by finally giving his alcoholism justified respect. It had taken over so much of his life, so much of our life. 
I was offered tools to help me understand why his addiction was so powerful. And I learned the key principles that keep people in recovery. His life changed so drastically in the eight weeks he was there that even though we were apart, I felt closer to him through my own understanding of his disease. He requested that I write him a letter explaining the impact his alcoholism had on me and our family. It was a challenging letter to write, but I took the opportunity to be thankful he was in rehab. I did write about the impact of his drinking and our lives, but began to focus on forgiveness so that I could also heal. I felt like my journey up this mountain was coming to an end. I had reached the summit and looked at the view around me. Things were so clear from up here, and I looked down below to see the challenging path I had traveled. Before the first step, I had felt that the distance was too high and too far to climb. The view from this height allowed me to see the path that I tracked to the top. I saw the caves that symbolized the dark places I retreated into on my journey, the ledges that seemed too narrow to get by, the rocky terrain that seemed totally impassable. The fact is addiction impacts the entire family. It is a journey and it is difficult. The key for me was perspective, processing of my own experiences surrounding my husband's alcoholism, and the grace to understand addiction for what it is, a disease. I want this to be a message of hope that things can change. As providers, we must remember that addiction is a family disease and our communities need to be ready to care and support each member of that family. And for those of us that have a loved one that struggles with addiction, we must remember it's okay to love them.